Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Despite my best efforts, the world of social media continues to migrate to, some might say devolve to, short form content as the most desirable type. Now, forgive my contrarianism about TikToks, reels, and stories, but I'm a podcaster and a blogger. I'm also a B2B content creator myself, which tends to lean toward longer form content as the preference. So my nature is simply the antithesis of 15-second videos and 10-second story frames. When I stop to consume content, and apparently create it, I want to read an article, or watch an in-depth video interview or documentary, or listen to a podcast, which, depending upon the topic, could last 15 minutes like my Monday commentaries, 30 minutes or so like these interview episodes, or even a lot longer if the subject of the interview or topic of conversation is really interesting. But I am creeping up on 50. The trendy audiences most marketers covet are half my age and, alas, have less than half my attention span. All joking aside, though, all of us marketers, regardless of age or content preference, have to recognize, understand, and implement strategies and tactics that feature short-form content. Ashwath Narayanan is the CEO and founder of Social Current. It is a Next Generation Youth Powered Emerging Media Agency, according to its website at socialcurrent.co. It also has a companion influencer marketing search engine to help you identify content creators. But Social Current specializes in that hot, trendy, short form content. So I asked Narayanan to swing by and chat with us about why it's so imperative for marketers to embrace it, how to create good short form content, and his take on influencer marketing in general. I actually turned a nice phrase in this episode, too, that bakes in a nice reminder of how to mix short-form content with long-form. So keep an ear out for that. I'm, I'm hoping it catches on. Before we talk to Ashwath, though, let's take a moment to learn something from a customer of our presenting sponsor, Tagger. It is a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. But as you know, I like to chat with Tagger customers rather than just drop an ad here. I think it's more useful for you to hear what they've learned and what they're using the platform for. TJ Ferreira is one of those customers. He's the co-founder of Bub's Naturals, a health and wellness family of products. I spoke to him recently about how he uses Tagger. Tell me just generally what you use Tagger for. What do you do in there the most mo- most often? It's really a validation check for us, uh, first and foremost, for people that we're, we're dealing with for any ambassadors or influencers or anything like that. Um, so obviously we have a good inbound and a good collection in terms of um, what our Instagram does, what our social does in terms of Facebook, et cetera. When we have those people in our ecosystem that are either, you know, macro, micro influencers, what have you, it just allows us a quick double check to make sure that they're aligned with our kind of business, our verticals and kind of the direction that we want to go to just say, Hey, okay, cool. Let's keep proceeding and reach out to them and bring them into the ecosystem. Or maybe there's not, I mean, obviously like, you know, every, every business has a, um, and you know, it has nuances in the success channel and we can play in 20 of them or we can go narrow and deep. And this tagger just really helps us go narrow and deep with the areas that are successful for us already and just scales it for us. Thanks to TJ and Bubs Naturals for sharing their use of tagger to learn more and get a demo to see if tagger is right for you. Just visit jason.online slash tagger today. That's jason.online slash tagger. What is it with all this damn short form content? Get off my lawn. 
Ashwath Narayanan from Social Current bites back at the old man next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. Ashwath, why do you think it is that short form video, snackable content, as it were, is so popular today? That's a really good question. So um, if you look at the statistics on attention spans, they're really going down. So Gen Z is supposed to have an attention span of eight seconds. Millennials aren't that far behind with the 12 second attention span. And so video, long form video just doesn't cut it anymore. To get the attention of younger audiences, you need short form. And that's why it's the next big thing. That's why it's so big right now. And that's why it's a really easy way to communicate with younger audiences and grab their attention without, you know, getting lost. You know, I don't want to dismiss or, or minimize the seriousness of, of conditions like attention deficit disorder or ADHD, but do you think short-term content is a byproduct of either society in general having too many information sources to choose from or just general human behavior, shorter attention spans, or maybe even some causal relationship between those two? Yeah, I think it's a combination of both. But I think, you know, if you look at how much information we have available, there's there's so much you have you you have so many different search engines, you have so many different people creating content. And so if you want to even, you know, consume a very small percentage of it, you need to go through it really fast. And so short form is just the alternative where you consume information really fast without having to, um, you know, get stuck on just one content source. So I think, I think it's, it's a combination of both. That's fair. So is there, is there no interest in long form uh, content from younger consumers or, or what context do you think pr- uh, predicate someone from, let's say Gen Z saying, okay, I need to watch a 10 minute video or listen to a 25 minute podcast or, or read this blog post. What's the tipping point for that behavior? Yeah, I think I think the difference between short form and long form really is, you know, that content filter with short form people tend to have a lower content filter. That means people, you know, may watch more things versus long form people tend to be more selective about what they watch because they're, you know, giving away more of their time. And so I don't I don't think long form is gone. I think long form will always stay. But I think, you know, long form content has to be much better to hook an audience to grab, you know, their attention. And short form can often, you know, be that um, intro to the long form and what a lot of people are doing. And so I think long form is always here. Long form will always be there. But the filter around long form has to be um, is, is much higher than short form. Let me run this by you because I've I've been you know sort of proselytizing I guess a little bit here on the on the show r- recently. I think the pendulum might swing back a bit. I think consumers in general are going to want more substance and deeper connections with the content creators they trust. I can see blogs, email newsletters, podcasts, uh, and the like kind of reemerging as smart paths for especially for Gen Z creators. I think that's also indicative of the subscription model you're seeing from platforms like Fanbase and Clash App, whose leadership we've spoken to recently on the show. I actually read today that Instagram is going to start testing subscription-based content levels for creators, too. Does that jive with your thinking of the future or, or no, and why? Yeah, it does. And the way I look at it is long form is really top, uh, short form is really top of the funnel. It, it's how people come in and then long form is how they stay. And so you're, you're not going to see either one win. I think you're going to see a combination of both. I think podcasts, YouTube, long videos, you know, webinars are always going to be there, but how people get them in there is through short form clips, through short form content. And so I think, I think subscriptions um, are going to be for long form content. But the way to get someone to subscribe is through creating recurring short form content. I think I'm going to coin a phrase. I just thought of the, 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 the fashion to do this tease, then please. So I love that. I there love we go. That. That, that's, that's, the, that's your content strategy from now on. Tease them and then please them. Exactly. Exactly. So 
Social Current, uh, your company helps companies and individuals, I think, get better at short form videos, especially TikTok type snapshots of content. Before I go much further, though, because I want to ask more about short form content in general, give us a little background on Social Current. What what all does the company do so we can kind of frame the conversation better? Of course. Yeah. So we we started out as an agency really helping organizations, individuals, nonprofits get on platforms like TikTok, Reels, YouTube Shorts. Um, we did everything from coaching, editing, management, and then we got into a little bit of influencer marketing. And now we're doing a little a lot of that, but we're also building a platform that matches brands with TikTok creators to reach Gen Z more effectively. So what we've really identified in our research is a lot of brands struggle with identifying who the right fit is. And then once they do identify the right fit, what to do with them, especially on short form platforms where, you know, the upside is a lot higher. And so they want to make sure that, you know, content is in, on trend, on brand. And so we're building an algorithm that would match um, the TikTok creator with the brand and a Gen Z strategist to give them the strategy and the right influencer to get on the platform. We're currently doing this for, you know, hundreds of brands. Um, we're running influencer campaigns with thousands of influencers. And um, yeah, so that's a little bit about what we're building at Social Current. That's pretty cool. So I, I'm, I'm curious how you attack that prioritization, that algorithm building of matching creators for brands. What do you look for uh, in a in a content creator, especially on TikTok, when a brand comes to you and says, we want to engage 10 TikTokers to create more awareness and engagement around our brand, what factors do you look at with the data that you can get from TikTok, um, maybe the data you can get from from you know other places to build into an algorithm that that answers that question? Who are the right influencers for this brand? Yeah, so it, it's a combination of the basic ones such as, you know, engagement rate, likes, you know, followers, all of that good stuff compared to budget of the brand. But then a lot of what we're doing is social listening. So we're looking at, you know, what content the brand is creating, what content their competitors are creating, what content their industry is creating, what keywords they're using within that content. And then we're matching them up to the influencer and what content they're creating, what keywords they're using and making sure that it's, you know, in the same space. And so a lot of, you know, what we're trying to build is something that will listen to the content that all these different stakeholders are creating and then match based on content because in the long term content is what is going to make um, a bigger difference and it's going to be what you know builds a better connection for the brand well when you start talking about social listening you're speaking my language so i I love that that's kind of my background in terms of understanding and utilizing and getting excited about uh, social technology so I, i love the fact that you're using that as a factor and i wish everybody did that would make these tools a lot better. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the short form content creation, because I know you, you, you started out sort of coaching folks uh, and I know you still do that to a degree. So for the brands out there, or maybe even the potential, you know, creators, influencers out there, um, if you had a uh, high level formula for success with that type of content, that short form video snackable content, what emerges as factors in successful TikToks, let's say. It's really something that people didn't know, you know, outside of TikTok. So it, it, it's a new thing that you're teaching someone, you're giving value, and then you're telling a story around it. So whether that's a new graphic design tip, whether that's, you know, how to take a photo a certain way, whether that's a new social media tool, it's something that they wouldn't have learned somewhere else. And then you're telling your story around how you found it, how you're using it, how they can use it. And so really, how can you provide more value to your audience is the question people should ask themselves, and then they should do that. And then obviously, you can do the things around like the first five seconds matter the most, catchy titles matter, songs matter, trends matter. But really, it comes down to, is it something they would have learned somewhere else? Is it, is it something new? And um, you know, are you, are you giving them value? You know, it's interesting that, that you say that because I, I certainly have seen TikToks uh, and TikTokers who provide that. And I appreciate that because that aligns with a lot of what I've always told brands about content is you, your content really has to be audience centric and you've got to be able to provide value to them and teach them something or entertain them or something like that. And I think that certainly aligns. But I think when I think of TikTok and, and, and maybe it's just because I don't spend a lot of my time there, I've been sort of the grumpy old man saying, get off my lawn with TikTok for a while now, um, but I still consume it. 
But most of what I see, and maybe this is just my user behavior as a consumer versus really getting deep into the platform. Most of what I see is, um, you know, lip syncs and uh, dance challenges and people telling dad jokes and things like that. Is that a byproduct of my crappy use of the platform or am I, am I not just seeing enough there? Because when I think about TikTok, I say, look, it's a place where brands should go and have fun because it's kind of silly and, and kind of goofy, but maybe I'm just not getting deep enough into it. Is that maybe an accurate assessment? That's a, that's another thing for brands. So when you're telling those stories, when you're giving value in a different way, you can make it really fun. One of the, one of the coolest brands that does this is Duolingo. They, they are huge on TikTok. They're one of the most popular brands on the platform right now. And they create a lot of fun content that the key thing is there's no other place you would see that. There's, you couldn't go down to the Duolingo office and see that. You wouldn't go to their Instagram and see that. You wouldn't see that on their Twitter. But you see that on TikTok. And so for brands, you know, are there behind the scenes funny stories that you could share? Are there, you know, behind the scenes employee stories you could share? Could you do skits on TikTok? And so it's that combination of like, can you create entertaining content that someone would see nowhere else um, as well? But yeah, everyone's got that feed of, you know, funny jokes, um, dad jokes, definitely um, that they're not getting elsewhere. Um, yeah, I think I think my first ten or fifteen posts of my own on TikTok were playing whatever the lip sync song of the day was, and just looking at the camera and shaking my head like, "No, I'm not going to do this." So that wasn't entertaining enough for me to get any followers, though. But that's okay. Um, really curious about your thoughts on the impact of the metaverse and Web three O. Are we are we going to have short form content creators and platforms there? I, I, I can't get a sense of what the metaverse even looks like from an experiential perspective yet. I would imagine TikTok and others are going to have to develop something different to stand out there. Is that your take on it? What do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I, I think TikTok definitely is going to, you know, have to develop something different. I think the question for TikTok is going to come down to virtual versus artificial. Are they going to develop, you know, outside the phone? Or are they going to develop, you know, inside the metaverse? And so I think you know, a lot of these organizations are going to have to decide that. Apple, I know, is going through kind of the AR, AR phase. Um, and so I think it's going to come down to what they decide. But I think creators are playing a huge role in the metaverse. I'm seeing a lot of creators launching their own coins. I'm seeing a lot of creators, you know, thinking about crypto and NFTs as a way to monetize. And I think, you know, the, the space has a lot of potential for creators. I think another kind of media industry that, you know, crypto might affect, um, is is the news media industry. I think there's a lot of potential around how news organizations can use crypto, how media organizations can use crypto around like sharing um, content, making sure, you know, fact checking, things like that. Um, so there's there's a lot of Web3 and media intersections, but I'm not I'm not yet sure how TikTok is going to react to it. Um, but I think we'll find out um, soon enough. Well, if, if, if you think there's possibility that the metaverse and Web3 and crypto can fact check the news, I'm all in. Let's do that. That sounds pretty exciting to me. <laughs> That's awesome stuff, Ashworth. Um, good, good thoughts to chew on it. If people want to connect, uh, where can they find Social Current and where can they find you on the interwebs? Yeah, you can go to socialcurrent.com, S-O-C-I-A-L-C-U-R-R-A-N-T.com, um, or you can find us on LinkedIn as well, and you can connect with me on LinkedIn as well, um, to, and we can chat. Very good. Uh, we, we could all certainly use help with the snackable content. I really appreciate what you're doing, and uh, thanks for sharing some wisdom with us today. Of course. Thanks for having me. This was a great conversation. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence.
This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might like as well. I'm Nick Westergaard, host of the On Brand Podcast. Each week I interview marketing thought leaders or those working for innovative brands like Adobe, Ben & Jerry's, HBO, Salesforce, and Whole Foods. You'll learn how to tell stronger stories and build better brands. Just visit onbrandpodcast.com or search for On Brand with Nick Westergaard wherever you like to listen. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.